Hello, and welcome to Tough to Treat. This is Susan Clinton, I'm one of your co-hosts for the podcast, Tough to Treat. In this episode, we are going to be talking about a gentleman that is having um, pain and blood sugar problems and listening to the clinical reasoning and trying to help him sort out what is mechanical and what may be um, metabolic is very interesting. We look forward to your feedback and welcome to spring 2019. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tough to Treat. This is Susan Clinton, along with my co-host, Erica Mello. Hi, Erica. Hi, Susan. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you today? Good, 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 good. Good. So we've both, been, we've both been recovering from uh, head colds and sinus infections and yeah. <laughs> kind of okay. crazy end of winter stuff. I'm hopeful that spring is going to be around the corner at some point soon. I know. Um, but crazy. here we are, and we're ready to carry on for the, for the next spring quarter with Tough to Treat. Yeah. So today I'm up with a, with a client that um, I saw a while back that I wanted to present today. It was a pretty interesting case in so much that um, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, sometimes it's a duck and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. And so let's dive in and see what we can figure out today. Let's go for it. All right. So this is a 64-year-old male who is a retired high-tech company owner that <clears throat> it has been complaining of pain in both of his feet, uh, one side more than the other, the left side more than the right side. And a sudden onset of foot pain that started mm, when I saw him, it had been one, two, three, four, five, five about five months. Okay. So it started five months prior to our visit together. Mm -hmm. And he had kind of a circuitous route around everything that went on. So I'm going to kind of pull his history together along with his musculoskeletal pieces that have kind of come with it and see if we can't make some sense out of it. Um, when he got to me, his basic complaint was of, he called it neuropathy. I have neuropathy mm -hmm. in both feet. Um, I have pain. I have tingling. I have burning. Mm -hmm. And I have it in my big toes, and I have it in my feet, and sometimes I have it up the back of my leg, um, about to the calf area, but mostly in the feet. Got it. And so I, you know, I said, okay, so tell me about when this happened and what started going on. And he said, it started after I had a scare about my blood sugar, which uh. was five months ago. And so I went on this, this diet down to less than 20 carbs a day and less than 900 calories a day. Oh my Lord. And started doing <laughs> cardio. <clears throat> Whoa. That I started off with uh, cardio, uh, walking and kind of elliptical stuff mm -hmm. um, for, thir for a 30 minute session. Then I worked up to two 30 minute sessions. Then I worked up to three 30 minute sessions. A day? A day. Oh my and, God. And, and within like two weeks' time, I started having symptoms in both feet. Mm. Okay. So he said at that point in time, it, a month, about a month had passed and he had lost about 25 pounds. Lord. And he had also was told by his physician to go ahead and decrease the cardio to one time a, a day for 30 minutes. And so he did. And then he went to go see And this. So he said that he, he, had, he had sought advice from an um, endocrinologist when he had his blood sugar scare. <clears throat> and so his endo was the one that, you know, wanted him to try to shed some pounds and, uh, you know, change the, change his diet a bit and see if he couldn't, you know, get things back under control. Yep. And so he went to his PCP and his PCP did an A1C test and it was down to 6.1. And his PCP said, this can't be diabetes. Nothing drops that fast. You know, it's probably just one of those blips on the screen. And then mm -hmm. the next month it was down to 5.3. So the, okay. the, so he did have a rapid weight loss and change 
and it started kind of ringing some bells in my in my brain at this point listening to his story that wow that was a lot of stress to put on your system there was a system that was already stressed and he went through a tremendous amount of stress to to change um his metabolic system a bit so yeah. I just kind of, you know, sat back and started kind of just letting him tell his story. I said, well, tell me more about what's going on then. Tell me a little bit more about what's happening. And, uh, you know, I, I will just say right out loud here that um, there is a little bit of some obsessive compulsive stuff here <laughs> admitted to by the patient. I mean, this yeah. is his story. He goes, I admit I have <clears throat> OCD tendencies, but he said, mm-hmm. I, I function better if I pay attention to it rather than trying to ignore it. So mm-hmm. I yep. said, I'm just going with it. Just tell yep. me more. Tell me more. So he started wearing a glucose monitor so he could monitor what his glucose was during, doing during the day. And he was saying that when the, when I get up in the morning, you know, I eat and my glucose goes up and then it comes down and then it takes a couple hours before it comes down to where it's supposed to be. And I monitor it. And then in the afternoon when my glucose starts rising, so does my pain. What? how does he do that? I have like, no idea. He just told me he has a glucose monitor. And usually you just, cause my mother was diabetic. Usually just sort of prick your thing. I mean, okay. Yeah. Well, your finger. He's, he's, he's got resources. So he does. <laughs> A lot more. Okay. So, and again, admittedly on his part, he goes, I'm, uh, it's probably overkill. I've realized that. But he goes, I don't have anything else to do since I sold off all my companies and I'm retired. I, yeah. you know, he goes, I'm, I'm kind of a research freak. So. So his pain. Okay. So his pain went up when the blood sugar went up. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So we just it. kind of in space hold that because I was yep. just, there was a lot of information coming in all at one time. Got it. But then he switched and went back to this story um, about how he started chasing doctors. Hmm. So he started reading. He likes to do a lot of research. He really likes his PCP. Um, but he found this group of physicians in his area where they are called some sort of peripheral surgical uh, per, or extremity surgical, you know, sur- surgeons or something like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he found this one guy in that group and went to go see him. It turned out to be a podiatrist. And the, he, he's, the, the guy kind of just was poking around at him and touched him in various places and said some things and said, you know, this is what we need to do. We need to do surgery and release the nerves behind your knee. Oh, boy. And Uh, at that point, he reached out to a physician friend of his, and the physician friend was just like, whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking, stop it. Don't go that way. mm -hmm. You know, so in the meantime, he looked it up, and he realized that podiatrists weren't even allowed to, like, do surgery, you know, (laughs) around the knee. And he started getting some kind of, you know, niggly feelings that maybe this isn't the right way to go. So he kind of listened to his friend, the physician who said, you know, just, you know, knock that off. And why don't you, you know, seek out some good, uh, a good physical therapist and let them, you know, kind of see what's going on there. Cause this is sounding a little bit different than what I would consider a neuropathy. Mm-hmm. So anyway, to make a long story short, he found me um, by the physician's referral, which was nice. And um, he came into the office, and so we, had, we, we were able to kind of get down to, you know, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on when you feel your pain and when you don't feel your pain. And I get the whole blood sugar thing. So let's space hold that and put it to the side, and let's talk about your pain and what brings it on, what doesn't bring it on, how, you know, intolerable is it. What do you do to soothe it? How are you managing this? What's happening? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to get him, you know, kind of refocused on let's get over here to the, to this side of it. Mm-hmm. And so what he told me is he says he's very hypersensitive on his big toe and that he does have pain in his feet, but the, the toe especially feels the worst so much both- that he doesn't even want to have a sheet cover touching it. Both feet you know, or just the left? The, the left greater than the right. Got it. But they're both feet. Got it. Okay. He said that when I lie down at nighttime, my symptoms within 10 to 12 minutes go completely away. And then Uh, he says to me, that's not really neuropathy, is it? Because it usually gets worse at night. (laughs) uh, Let's hear the rest of the story before we start making any determinations about anything. Yeah. yeah. Then he said, and I said, well, how do you feel when you get up in the morning? I'm fine in the morning. I can do whatever I want to do in the morning. He goes, I'll tell you when it starts to get worse is when I 
go and get into my easy chair. My, you know, lazy boy kind of, you know, mm -hmm, reclining mm -hmm, chair. Mm -hmm. And he said, and that begins to bring it on. He goes, but it still also is the time when my glucose is going up. And I said, I know, I've got that. So let's, again, let's stick mm -hmm. with this part first. And we'll try to see what we can do about pulling this together a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and he said that it, he feels like, you know, he just, and then it gets worse at that point and it kind of stays bad. And, but he likes to, that's where he likes to be in the evening and, you know, um, and then when he lays down at nighttime, it gets better. And so this is pretty much the thing that went on. So he said, then I did some research and I started reading and he said, once upon a time, somebody did something and said, maybe something about my L5S1. And I said, well, how long ago was that? And he goes, well, that was a couple of years ago. And I said, did you have symptoms then? And he goes, no, my back just kind of hurt. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but he said that, and I said, well, have you had any other musculoskeletal issues? Your spine, anywhere else, you know, mm -hmm. that, that have been, you know, plaguing you, falls, car accidents, anything. And he said, well, I did see a neurologist once upon a time because I was having this problem in my neck. And he went into this whole explanation about his facets and how they were clicking and popping and all of these different things. <clears throat> and he said, the neurologist said to him, hey, this is great news. This is something that a really good physical therapist can help you with. Thank God. So he went, yeah. So he went to a, see a really good PT and they did, you know, whatever they did. And he said the biggest thing that helped him was all the neck exercises and he really liked them. And he said, now I really don't have too many problems in my neck. He said, but he said, I do have to tell you this now. My symptoms are starting to spread. Hmm. And I said, spread in what way? And he goes, well, I'm having problems with urinary retention and emptying. And I'm having problems not being able to orgasm. So I said, so like erectile dysfunction. He goes, yeah, yeah exactly. He goes, I can't get an erection, but I can't get past that part of it. And so, was this, okay, go ahead. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah you, I can no, get stop there. Go ahead no, and ask no, no, questions. No, so was that the, um, the orgasm and the retention, was that since his reading of stuff on the internet or just, it just happened like, well, he's always on the internet, so. Okay. okay. okay <laughs> but this stuff, this stuff is definitely has occurred over the last, the last two months. Okay. So question. So mm -hmm. when he, in the morning he gets up, he's generally okay. When he starts to sit in his easy chair, uh, the symptoms uh, get worse. And then at the end of the day, when he's flat on his back in bed, he's pretty okay. So it's the middle of the, during the day when he's sitting or generally moving does walking or standing make him worse or is it mostly just the sitting in the easy chair it seems that it comes on mostly in the easy chair but sometimes if he's been on his feet for a while it can be starting to happen as well um so both, his day is spent by getting up he likes to do his his exercises walking and stuff mm -hmm. and then he um you know goes to his computer and he says i have a nice straight chair that i can sit in and um, I can work away at my computer. It's when he starts to get into the easy chair and some of that stuff that he starts to feel bad. And it starts to happen in the later part of the day. Okay. Is he tall, Susan? What's his stature? Um, he's about 5'8". And, okay, that's you know, it, yeah, he weighs about, I think he told me. Yeah, of course he told me. Um, he weighs, uh, at the time I saw him, he was weighing 164. And he was wanting to get finally down to, I think his goal weight was 156 that he really wanted to get to. Okay. Does he have a history of diabetes in the family at all or no? No. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he said yeah. he had a blood sugar scare. What was the blood sugar scare that prompted him? Well, he just had a, you know, one of your blood panel tests, uh, you know, where okay. they, you know, fasting glucose, yeah, and, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And he, it was just a bit high. Okay. And... Um, okay. he's a take action kind of guy. If something yeah. is just a little bit off, he's going to, you know, admittedly Correct. all on, all of this yeah. you know, comes from him. It wasn't any supposition on my part or judgment on yeah. my part. He said, yeah. you know, he goes, I tend to go all in, uh, you know, yeah. rather That's than okay. yeah. part way. So he goes, and I know I probably overdo it. Some people tell me that all the time. And it's like, yeah. and he goes, I do better if I can just follow it than if I try to ignore it. He goes, cause yeah. then it builds up in my brain and it doesn't work so well for him. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, this is what he tried. So he said, so I decided that I, I felt like maybe my posture was not good in the easy chair. So I put a back brace on <laughs> <laughs> and 
sat in the easy chair and it was better. My symptoms were better. I said, mm-hmm. okay, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So he said, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear the brace and roll my computer chair into the living room so I can watch the things I want to watch, but sit in a different chair. Oh boy. And see how it works. So okay. it's like, okay, mm-hmm. that's good. So I, so we kind of came up with the idea that it feels better when you get flat. It feels, so when, I, when you get out of standing or out of compression, you feel better. Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that? And he said, yes, I would. And I said, do you ever lie down in the middle of the day? No, never. It's like, okay. So, but when you lie down at night, in about 10 minutes, this pain that's making you crazy tends to really go away completely. He said, yes. And I said, do you think that this would be something you could do in the middle of the day if you were feeling the symptom? He said, yeah, Mm -hmm. you know, I think I could do that. So it's like, okay, because if it helps your pain, it might be good to just get off your feet a a bit, you know, until we can kind of figure out what all is happening here. Mm -hmm. Um, And I said, you know, are you willing to see how you do if you don't do the easy chair? You know, and he said, yes, Mm -hmm. that's why he was thinking about bringing his computer chair in. So he had already problem solved in many ways of which I wanted to go with him, which I thought was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. So then as we were sitting there talking, you know, we, I was asking him some questions about the urinary retention. And he said, well, when I went to see the, the, the urologist his story was i was having a lot of problems with my he still calls it his neuropathy Mm -hmm. um and he goes i noticed that when my neuropathy is worse that's when i have more retention it's harder for me to start my pee it's harder to to Hmm. empty all the way when i'm not having that it seems to be easier so he goes i'm supposed to go back and have a flow test done in a a couple of months Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, he's convinced his physician to uh, get an MRI for him. Of so, his low lumbar of spine. His, of his lumbar yeah. spine. Okay. So, um, so anyway, you have any questions you want to ask here? Uh, I, I mean, from do, were were you thinking anything at this point in terms of 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 source of symptoms? But? So sure, absolutely. Because as I was going through it, there were a lot of things that popped into my mind. It's like, okay, <clears throat> is this a diabetic neuropathy for real? Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Um, or, you know, this sounds like it has some mechanical properties to it that I would not expect with a neuropathy. Right. In other words, position changes can actually make this better. Yep. And so yep. he was so fixed on the idea that as his blood sugar rises, so does his pain. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of, I just said, well, what if we looked at it from another lens coming around the other way? What if it was your pain that was actually causing your blood sugar to rise? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you're telling me that you have the normal rise of blood sugar when you eat, but this is occurring when you're not around the time that you're not eating. Yes, it's it's interesting because I have had it's interesting you mentioned the peripheral neuropathy when you started out. I have had a slew of patients lately in that age group, maybe a little bit older, mm-hmm. with quote unquote symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. They come in and my feet are numb. I mean mm-hmm. I mean much more than ever before. No history of diabetes, nothing mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And I digress, but I just think it's interesting. I've seen a lot more of that lately. I don't know why, but anyway, go ahead. So I'm sorry. It, when he exercises, it doesn't tend to bring on his symptoms. Does not. Does okay. not. Not, okay. not like some of the other things that he does, especially the later part of the day and sitting in the easy chair. You know. And what, what exercise does he do, Susan? He just uh, is walking on the treadmill now. A walking treadmill. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got it. So, there, so, so, so you know, we started thinking about that a little bit. And I said, you know, just let's, you know, think about that from a different lens. You know, maybe your pain is actually getting your glucose to rise and it's not going up to dangerous levels. So, you know, uh, it, you know, that can happen because mm-hmm. if you're in pain, you're going to have much more of a stress response in your system. And that could be, mm-hmm. a, you know, a driver. And he goes, well, yes, my cortisol goes up at the same time. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, that makes sense to me. Does that yeah, make sense yeah. to you? And he said, yeah, it does kind of. So mm-hmm, he started mm-hmm. to think and then he's, you know, and he goes, well, I, that issue that I had in my neck when I, when they did the MRI there, of course I had a lot of osteophytes and, you know, some other things that were going on in my neck as well. 
could that be what's happening in my lumbar spine? And I said, sure, possibly, you know, mm -hmm. it, it certainly could. I said, but you know very well that, you know, we have to look for a clinical correlation because, yeah, he goes, oh, I've read the stories. He goes, I know that you could cross match me against all of my peers and those with pain and without, we'd all have the same MRI. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he, I mean, he's very well, mm -hmm. <laughs> very mm -hmm. well read. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, okay, so with that in mind, and you're getting an MRI, you know, um, what are you worried about? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you the most worried about? And yeah. so his, his big worry is he goes that this is something that's going to be missed metabolically that will, you know, uh, be an increasing disability to me that I won't be able to live the life I want to live because I, this metabolic piece is, is somebody just can't figure out what the metabolic piece is. So I got that. That's, you know, mm -hmm. I needed to get to the bottom of what his fears were. Yeah. And yeah. In my head, the red flags that I were seeing was it seems like his diabetes is fairly well under control, as Endo sure thinks it is. And, you know, he's, you know, he's not, his glucose isn't rising to dangerous levels and it's coming back down. And he's, I mean, he's a single su subject case design here that, you know, on himself, right. yeah. you know, working on all of this. Um, you know, I'm beginning to start to think that when that you start seeing the things with urinary retention, decreased emptying, he does not have paresthesia, saddle paresthesia. I did ask him that. Ah, uh, yeah. Because <clears throat> you know where I'm headed here mm -hmm, is I'm mm -hmm. thinking that there's some sort of a central disc or something in the, uh, you know, because why is the pelvis being involved now too? And usually, yes. you know, urinary retention along with the pain in the legs, both legs, not one leg. Yeah, so yeah. It's, you know, and is it a central disc that's getting, you know, both sides posterior yeah. lateral? Because yeah, he yeah. Does, it's not stenosis like symptoms. No. Because it, it's worse in flexion. Yes, yes. Better in extension. Yes, it's yeah. worse in compression. It's yeah, better yeah. with decompression. You know, and, so. And he feels better when he's more supported with the back brace in terms yeah, of postural. Right. It, right. Yeah. So yeah. when he doesn't slump down into his yes. seat, he does better. Yeah. yeah. I'm wondering if there, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Susan. Go ahead. No, I'm just wondering if there's any research out there, maybe you would know, on the role of the endocrine system and um, persistent pain, like blood sugar changes and things like that. I don't know of any, there, but... There is research out there, and I'll tell you, it's very complicated. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I can speak to it as well mm -hmm. as others, um, but some of the researchers to follow are people like uh, Mick Thatcher um, mm, yes, out of the of UK. He does a yeah. lot of immuno... Uh, yes. neurology type of stuff and there is a lot around the immune system and the yes. neuro system and driving uh driving a, a pain response or you know a sympathetic yes. you know protective response type yeah. thing mm -hmm. and if he's worried about that too that's going to you know centrally mediate a little bit of that totally. as well you know if he like sees his, his blood sugar going up and the worry starts to kick in and those types yeah. of things yeah but but i told him i said will be interesting i said let's just go with this positional piece right now yeah um he's gonna have an mri Mm -hmm. We'll see what goes on there, um, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. But um, you know, and I said, let's just go with these positional changes. Get out of the easy chair. Let you know. I said, you know, before your symptoms start to come on, right? And he goes, yeah, I can pretty much tell. And I said, lay down then. Don't even wait for it to start. I said, just go. You know, take 15 minutes and lay down on your bed and or on the floor, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Grab your iPad, keep doing whatever it is you're doing. Just do it in a different position. Yep. And let's change up how you're doing. You know the you know the the easy chair and see if you know you can take more breaks too. Like on the commercials, get up and move around. You know, do some different things that maybe we get in the easy chair and we don't feel like doing because we're overcoming inertia a little right. bit more. Exactly. When you know, it's kind of like laying down in a slump position to watch TV. Yeah. So um. And I said, and let's, you know, you've already had the MRI schedule. Let's see what goes on with that. And let's just kind of watch this. And I said, watch it with a different lens and see if you think maybe the pain's driving the blood sugar rather than the blood, blood sugar driving the pain. pain. Yep. And just see, because you're already looking at that. I just, I wasn't going to tell him not to do that because he said that he, you know, that's how he operates. I just was going to meet him where he was. So, and he, so, and so he went away and uh, call, you know, called me a week later to tell me that, if he does lay down, it seems to be better. And mm -hmm. he really does feel like the pain may be driving the blood sugar and the quality of his pain has changed somewhat. Mm -hmm. It's not quite as hypersensitive in his big toes. 
Uh, and, and, he can't, and he can't really contribute that to anything other than maybe it's because I'm doing position changes Don't and change stuff like that. The day. And I said, okay, let's see how it goes. You, you had your MRI. Yes, I'm waiting for the results. So we had an appointment for the following week. Okay. How, how, how did he move generally? How did he walk into the office? Was he? Oh, yeah. So I probably, yes. Let me, let me hop back and go into what I did in the exam. Thank you okay. for reminding me. I just You're started coming for over. And it's like, wait, that's all she did? <laughs> Basically, a lot of my time was taken up with this story. Sure. And you totally. can imagine, yeah. and he needed to tell it. There wasn't yeah, going to be it. any stopping this train. You know, yeah. I needed to hear the story. He needed to tell it, and we were going to yeah. just go through it. And so we did do some movement things, but not a ton at this particular visit. Yeah. Yeah. So I did have him flex. Um, mm -hmm. You know, initial flexion didn't change anything for him. Mm -hmm. But if he stayed in that position for a while, he could tell me that, you know, some things were starting to happen. Okay, yeah. in his feet. Yep. Um, when he went into standing up straight, that seemed to be okay. I mean, flat back, you know, kind of some rounded shoulders, a little bit of forward head, you know, a, a guy who spends a lot of time, you know, in front of the computer, um, not a lot of great tone through his trunk, you know, just kind of, you know, a little bit on the, you know, sloppy movement side, nothing, nothing terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, otherwise, you know, very healthy looking, you know, gentleman, um, so we, you know, we took blood pressure, we did heart rate, he liked all of that stuff, everything was well within, you know, I mean, just great limits for a 64 year old male, yep. which is what mm -hmm. we all should be at that age, you know, really in good shape. Yep. And, you know, so, um, you know, so we did some flexion extension, we did a little, we, we squatted down. And it was interesting when he went down into the squat, he, and I said, no, squat all the way down like a catcher. I want to see what happens. And, you know, he said, no, it's a little stiff in my knees. But as he sat there for a little bit, he had a fairly rounded back and tucked under pelvis in that squat position. And as he was there for a bit, he said, I'm beginning to feel it in my feet. I'm wondering if I'm cutting off the circulation at my knees. And I said, no, I don't think so. Let's, and so while he was there, his shoes were off. And I said, let's just, you know, so we did like, you know, where you touch the skin and see the capillary refill. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, he's like, Oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's good. Mm -hmm. You know? And I, so that was relieving to yeah. him to see that. And I said, just come on up out of it and stand up tall again. And he did. And I said, how are your feet feeling now? And he walked around for a little bit. He goes, now they're starting to lessen back up again. Yeah. So it's clear that if he went into these kinds of weird, like, you know, um, he could flex over without actually flexing his lumbar spine, which yeah. is why bend overs didn't bother him. Yeah. When you get him in a position where that lumbar spine is drug into flexion, such as like that deep squat tucked under or slumping down into a chair, chair. that's what would begin to bring his symptoms on. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's why now everybody can kind of see, and that's what we just basically did that day. Cause that was what mm -hmm. we had time for. Yeah, sure. And so now everybody can kind of see, that's why I sent him home with just like change some positions because totally. immediately it was helping him. And I said, let's just see what happens. Um, rotation was limited all throughout. So obviously yeah. we need to add some rotation to a system and some other things, you know, some richness of movement down the road. But I'm going to just sometimes yeah. like, especially with this guy, he needed to tell a story. This is his mm -hmm. personality. And for you to start like having him move and bend, he, I don't think he was fully convinced that it was a mechanical issue anyway. So, right. so you need to listen to his story. You're going to get one opportunity with these people. And it's generally in the first visit to get them to unburden themselves. And it is, and I've said this before, I think it's a misnomer that patients want to get treated quote unquote, the first visit. They want to, they want a solution, whether it's telling him to do some lying on his back throughout the day. And, and, and especially with somebody like this, this guy's in his head, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, thinking is, 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 is for him is what he does best. Right. Yeah. And I think that I don't think we should rush to start running people through treat through a, a, an assessment protocol or whatever you want to call it, however you do it at, at the expense of cutting this guy's off, cutting him off. That would be the wrong thing to do. So I just wanted to throw that out there and you did it beautifully. So, so big deal. You, you know, you looked at him move, you know, side bend, forward bend, rotation, whatever. You're not going to glean a ton with that. I mean, you could have predicted your physical exam without even doing the physical exam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seriously, with people like this. Right, you know? right. So, and like uh, I said, right. you know, so there was a couple of red flags in there and I'm kind of <laughs> thinking, gosh, is this kind of starting to look a little bit like a kata equina? I will say the other thing that I did in the exam, <clears throat> as I'm looking at my papers, I did run through a neuromuscular screen. Mm. You know, reflexes, reflexes, you know, that kind of thing. Um, 
it was it was interesting. He really the reflexes were just a little bit sluggish, but all over. Not just like one here, one there. You mm -hmm. know, they just weren't the best, but they weren't the best in his upper extremities either. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, remember we had this thing in the neck too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, we may have to go back up to the neck at some point to kind of see and hear this stuff and kind of figure this out a little bit. But, you know, he certainly didn't have any signs of, of, um, you know, um, un of disinhibition. So, I mean, there was no Babinski, you know, or those kinds of things, any of those bigger, you know, reflexes like that for the long tracking stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the biggest thing was the pain. And um, it was really hard to tell if, you know, if he had a decreased sensory loss or not. I used the, you know, the little Kleenex and kind of went across. And mostly it was a little hypersensitive when the Kleenex went across, like yep. L5. And S one E stuff, but um, you know nothing like oh I don't feel that or yeah I feel that so yeah yeah <clears throat> almost you know I would almost have to say behaving a little bit more like a neuralgia than a mm -hmm. neuropathy <laughs> right right so and he, and he wasn't yeah. weak, weak or anything like that so no it's not no there like wasn't there wasn't any motor any. issues and you know and I and quite frankly I didn't stress him you know yeah. to see and um, you know so that was something that I will have to do at some point too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, okay. So, so he left and went away. He came back with his MRI. Um, um, one of the, the most, the thing that the inner MRI showed was that there was a lot of compression around the L5 S1 <clears throat> and L4 L5 region not atypical for normal aging. Okay. However, there was some that, that did remark on some um, issues of much more of a centralized compression rather than a, a posterior lateral. Posterior lateral. Right. Okay. So, but the interesting thing was there wasn't a lot in the spinal canal itself, which I didn't expect, but mm -hmm. I was concerned about with this pelvic floor issue, yes. tension thing going on that yes. seems to be new. Yes. Yep. And so um, his neurologist who read his report and, you know, said, you know, whatever you want to do in PT, go for it. You know, there's nothing here that I see that isn't going to get better, mm -hmm. you know, as far as yep. the symptoms go. But, you know, um, what was concerning to the, the patient and to me is the fact that he was still having some of this urinary retention business. Mm. Um, so I had all, I, <clears throat> at this point gave him a little bit of some ideas. I said, one of the things you can do is sit down to go to the bathroom and, you know, see if that, you know, to urinate and see if that, you know, helps that get a little bit better. Um, the guy stands, he, I remember we were talking about his posture that he's kind of got a flat back, you know, in that squat, he kind of tucks under, he does tend to be a little bit of a butt clincher when he stands. So mm. it makes me think maybe his pelvic floor is working really hard because yeah. something else in his trunk just doesn't, hasn't come on. You know, I mean, yeah. the guy has lost a lot of weight, you know, muscles in the abdomen are a bit long and, uh, uh, floppy, you know, because they don't have the tension from the weight and he lost a lot of weight really fast. Yeah. So, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, what happened, let's, let's see if we can't, you know, get some other muscles on board and, you know, change some ways that you're moving and, you know, and, and actually let's get a little variance around your exercise mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. the position changes help you feel better. So we've got that, but what can we do around your exercise to just give you that little bit of oomph that you're looking for and perhaps maybe change why that pelvic floor is, is over overworking i said in the meantime i want you to move your urology appointment up mm -hmm. you know and let them do a good look at you and be mm -hmm. sure everything is okay and he said well i've already called the urologist and i wanted to have psas done mm -hmm. so, okay good mm -hmm. so off he went mm -hmm. <laughs> we started on some, we just basically started on talking about um how can he start adding some partial squats in and you know some a little bit of weightlifting. and i gave him this guy likes to read and likes to think i gave him some great uh uh you know articles on you know you know cardiovascular and metabolic health and and strength training you know so he'd have some of that because he liked to read that and and get his head wrapped around it mm-hmm and I said, you know, I'm happy to work with you on that so we can find exercises that feel good for you and you don't feel like you're at risk for anything. So, but in the meantime, let's get this other piece. Let's just make sure everything's okay, um, you know, with what's going on. And so then 
the next time he came back a couple of weeks later, he had seen his urologist and they decided that, I mean, his PSAs were okay, but um, you know, they did kind of an ultrasound and took a look at some things and they felt like that his uh, prostate was enlarged. And that mm -hmm. may be one of the reasons he was having the urinary retention because a couple of years ago it wasn't. And so it had, there is, there was a change over the last two years. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so that, so now they're, they are, you know, he's set up to do the flow studies. And in the meantime, they have added some flow max to his uh, regime. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be doing better, especially if he sits down to void uh, um, okay. rather than standing. And I said, you know, mm -hmm. it's not always possible. In some places, you're going to have to stand to use the urinal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, understanding that it be as relaxed as possible, let your tush go, let your knees yes. bend a little bit, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of allow, you know, allow yourself to do that. And um, so that was actually in when they when they did void at the urologist's office, the before and after, they he was voiding much more completely than he was when he was there a few months ago so all of those signs are pointing into a better direction so mm -hmm. i started working with him we added the pelvic floor piece in and we started working on him being able to to sense and feel his pelvic floor and begin to feel like when it was not working as hard and when it was like gripping so he can start to feel the differences between that and begin to learn to say, okay, I need to, as I take a nice breath in, really allow that pelvic floor to lengthen and descend. And then, you know, so we started changing breathing patterns and recruiting deeper abdominal muscles for with his exercise and some of the stuff that he was doing and added that into, you know, some of the, because uh, he wanted to start like doing some bicep curls and tricep you know, lifts overhead and a few other things to start adding into his routine now that he was read about the strength training. He felt like that would be some good variance. So we added those in and, and uh, being aware of not over gripping and butt gripping while he's doing those exercises and things like that. And you did that via basically with the with breathing breathing patterns, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Right. And I actually I actually have at you know in my clinic we have a an ultrasound machine. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the imaging ultrasound imaging in real time machine. Yeah. 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 And um, so I I pop that out and I can get a picture of his levator plate for him, and he can see his his levator plate you know mm -hmm. open and widen with that nice breath in. And he can actually like uh, do a pelvic. Oh, that's great. See it shorten, and so he was able to, you know, pictures worth a thousand words sometimes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that that was he really enjoyed that. So we were able to see that and and help him get an understanding around that. And then I talked to him about some of the stuff he's eating and drinking, and uh, you know, just you know, he's a good water drinker, but I think he may be overhydrating a bit. You know, everybody mm -hmm. tends to like, oh, I should be drinking you know two-thirds of my body weight well mm -hmm. not everybody needs to be drinking two-thirds of their body weight it should be a little mm -hmm. bit more individual there was no research that you know eight ounces eight times mm -hmm. a day had any kind of validity to it mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it was something that somebody made up and everybody ran with it mm -hmm. so we started working on that a little bit and um you know just the basic you know he came in and was basically wanting to just come in and talk about some of the new things he was learning about and what he was thinking mm -hmm. about and just wanted to run it by me, which was great. But in the meantime, that, that, you know, he decided that his goal was to increase variance in his program. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we were doing. He still has issues with his pain, but it's mm -hmm. manageable. He can get it to go down. Mm -hmm. And he's of the understanding now after reading a lot, I gave him a lot of stuff about, you know, the neuroscience of pain as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, the you know the issues around that and so he's he's very interested in you know kind of managing how he feels about things and and understands that maybe perhaps the you know the stress that he put on his system when he went like all out to like lose all of his weight overnight mm -hmm. may have been something that kind of triggered that stress response that has taken mm -hmm. him some time to bring down correct and so he's really looking at that now with the breathing stuff that he's doing and so I got him on a um, what's the app? Calm? Yeah, C-A-L-M. If you guys haven't seen that app, it's kind of a cool one. Mm -hmm. You just turn it on and it just like opens and closes like this big circle, you know, and you just mm -hmm. breathe with That's... it and you can put some variants oh, in there. Oh, I like that one. It is. It's a great one. And, and so he uses that because yeah. – he likes those things. He's, you know, a tech oriented guy and he likes right. the, you know, the techie stuff. So 
so that's been going well so that's kind of where we left it um i i actually had a com the reason i thought about him for doing this for the podcast is i had a conversation with him on the phone uh actually yesterday and i'm happy to report that there's only pain in one foot oh great and it seems to and he says it definitely when i start worrying um and if I find myself kind of not moving a lot, that seems to be the time that it comes on. And he goes, as soon as I start feeling the pain, he goes, I do notice that I do have a increased stress response. Like, oh my God, here it comes again, that kind of thing, yeah, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so he's been continuing to work on different ways to, to do that. And one of the questions he had for me was, um, can you help me with some meditation? Nice. I sent him a book. I don't, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, there's, there's so one many that great... I just recently found and I like it. A book? A, a book on meditation? Yeah. Um, and it chunks it into little small chunks. So it's like really helpful for people really trying. And it comes in an audio book, which is nice too. Uh, because cool. I've tried meditation over the years. And yeah. for me, it's, I have a love hate relationship with meditation personally. Am I, so I'm always looking for new, new, new things. Um, so while you're looking for that, I'm just going to recap. So basically, you gave him um, that positional change to do uh, lying down throughout the day, or, you know, preemptively, and then you started working on uh, uh, giving some more variance to his movement program, doing some squats, doing some strengthening, um, and with regards to the urinary uh, piece and the erectile dysfunction, more about uh, working with breath and trying to let go some of those gripping, the butt gripper, the gripping muscles, things like that. Um, and then a, a huge educational, huge educational piece. And so does he, he no longer wears the back brace. He doesn't, he's not, he, right? He's, just takes that off and he's sitting generally okay in the least easy chair now um he's not using the easy chair at all oh he's he, not using the easy chair at all yeah he's the, like i told you he admittedly says when i go in i go all in ah uh, okay the easy chair was removed from the house oh my god so you know he's like and that's okay that's it's, it's his choice but he yeah. did find a couple of really nice good different chairs to sit in and he does fairly well like he said it goes i gotta get up and move though you know, I mean, he's paying more attention. Basically, he's mindful about it. if I sit for too long, it does begin to bother me. And so the name of the game is to not sit for so long and yeah, get up well, and move a little bit more often. And so he's doing that now just because it does help him mediate his symptoms much better. Yeah. The yeah. name of the book is uh, Stress Less, Accomplish More. Stress less, accomplish more. Oh, wait, yeah, like so for those of you out there, if you want to check it out, you can pick it up on Kindle. Um, okay. Oh, I like that. I'll take that. I'm so that's, I just, I just you know. gave him that title yesterday. We'll mm -hmm. see what he does with it. He's He'll probably buy very, it. Or, <laughs> oh, yeah. It, in multiple be, formats. <laughs> <laughs> He'll definitely come back with more research time. on meditation than I ever had. So okay. that'll be good. Exactly. Anyway, that's it. That's, that's really interesting. It's, you know, I mentioned that the peripheral neuropathy, it's so funny because I, I've seen, as I said, so much of it. And you would think, you know, with that presentation, he's young though, he's 64, right? And I've had patients tell me I'm taking the B vitamins and they're really helping me. And I'm like, go for it. You take those B vitamins and if it helps your numbness in both of your feet, then I am all for that, you know? Uh, and, and you tend, you tend to see it in, in, in my experience, in patients who don't really have this big history of, 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 of back issues, just, just problems uh, at all. And the patients that I've seen this week who've had that have literally have no back problems, you may have occasional back pain, but nothing really to write home about. And it's becoming a lot more common, um, I think, in, in our population. And, and everyone goes through the, you know, the EMGs and they, yeah. and they get put on Neurontin times 50 times a day, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not making these people better. Yeah. Because it's probably not a true neuropathy. Right. You know? So the only other thing that I did for him was I just gave him some information on healthy fats. Yeah. yeah for his yeah. diet. And yeah. he's open to it. You know, he's got yeah. this thing that he's doing and he's, not willing to really change out of that at this point. Mm -hmm. But I just I said, look, here's a couple of resources on healthy fats. It's good for the nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, just exactly. take a look at this and see. So 
we'll see what he that was the other thing i gave to him yesterday was you know because mm -hmm. we had accomplished a lot of what we were doing he's got a great variance in his exercise program you know he's very happy with how that's going you know he feels like he's getting stronger now before he was just doing cardio now he feels like he's actually you know d doing mm -hmm. things that are like building some oomph into his system which is mm -hmm. great and yep. um you know it's just told him i said you know just keep in mind that you know um that part of your diet needs to have some healthy fats in there mm -hmm. and so you know so i said here's a couple of articles read them because they have a whole choice of things or everything from you know nuts to avocados to all stuff that's all good for you that you like that's mm -hmm. all natural yeah. so see what you know maybe rings your bell and see what you're not getting as much of and maybe yeah. consider adding a little bit of that in yeah yeah and i also <clears throat> think it's important that um from a, at least a mechanical standpoint um that you know he, he that you gave him that to lie on your back throughout the day and people tend to say well you can do your exercises like at the end of the day i kind of disagree with that in terms of, of from like we always talked about this reset exercise i believe that you know we need to preemptively you know you don't just do a child's pose or a down dog or lie on your back because you have pain you need to do it throughout the day because it makes you feel better and don't wait to have pain and i think patients mm -hmm. need to understand get that it. get ahead of it and that will make you feel better you'll get decreased frequency and intensity of symptoms just do it every hour i tell patients to do things every hour knowing they're never going to do it every hour but the the message is there do it mm -hmm. frequently often and often, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I, if you give one thing, if you tell one thing to patients, if something that, if, if, if there's something that makes them better, they need to do that a lot. Yeah. Anyway. I agree. <laughs> well, I that's agree. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. All right, Great. everyone. Thank Thanks for listening. And let us know if you have any comments or questions for sure um look for our emails and we've got some great tips coming out on the emails and some different things now so if yep. you haven't signed up for our uh newsletter email please do so so we yep. can keep in touch with you on a much more regular basis and we've and got the, the opt-ins coming so yes. we sent one out and i think um my assistant put one so if you go on our website toughtotreat.com and you sign up i think you should get the clinical pearls guide that went out to our existing list. If you do, if you sign up on our tough to treat.com and you do not get that email me. Yes. Okay? Let us know. Yes. So we can make sure we get it to you. Yes. All Perfect. right. Thanks guys. Until, Until next, next time. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.